The short story in its simple written form for today would be a very... It wouldn't be a good proposition. You simply don't have the magazines available to you anymore. It's not like the old pulp magazine days where you had astounding magazine, thrilling wonders stories, and a whole list of other ones. All that has now disappeared, pretty much. You still can get short stories published, I think, in Asimov and The Atlantic and that sort of thing, but it's a really, really tough market. And even if you do get one published, unless you're a celebrity already, you simply really don't get anything from a financial point of view to justify doing it. Now, what is a short story is an important factor here. So if we go back to the 1920s, there was a a guy by the name of John Gollishaw, who was very influential to E. Van Vogt. And there was another party, Thomas Uzel, who echoed a lot of what uh, Mr. Gollishaw was saying. And that also then applied to another person, Walter B. Pitkin, who was also influential at the time, and whose works on the subject are all still available. Now, a short story in the written form, according to John Gollishaw from a psychological point of view, is one which takes the interested reader no more than one hour to read. Beyond that, people start to get kind of antsy, anxious, unsettled, whatever you want to call it. So a one hour limit for a reader. Now in today's terms, we have what we know as the one hour television show. And I think that that really is, in contemporary terms, what the short story has become for a complete and a well-organized short story, not just simply something that's kind of superficial, not terribly well-developed, or comes to any particularly good conclusions. Um, now, it is possible to get them down to 30 minutes, like the old Alfred Hitchcock Presents style show, but that can be a bit of a challenge. Not impossible, but would take considerable practice. So, back to the one-hour television show. Now, a one-hour television show is based on a teleplay. And if we take Deep Space Nine, for example, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, those scripts would run to around 11,500 words. And that is easy to read in one hour. In that form, uh, although you have all the dialogue and the descriptions of the actions and the scenes and so forth for to be able to produce the episode, it's not the most readable proposition in the world, but it's okay for those who like to read scripts. Now, such a script can be reasonably easily taken and converted into the more narrative form for a reader. And uh, that you could then publish to Kindle, Amazon Kindle. You can then take as I did with Deep Space Nine, Necessary Evil. Read that out as an audiobook, and again, if it's your own original work, then you can post that to Audible. Uh, alternatively, you can post it to YouTube to try things out, or at least get it published without any complication. And uh, that's where I think the short story is nowadays. So for those who are interested in short stories, the procedure I would recommend to start would be to write the teleplay, the screenplay, the script in a normal way, and then modify that for to publish as a, as a text piece so that you can publish it to Kindle. And then in addition to that, since you have it then converted to in the narrative form, you can convert that to an audio book. And if everything goes ahead, let's say the text option acts as a good piece of promotion and attracts interest, we'll then get the teleplay to work with and present as a, um, a proposition. You also have the audio book as well. So you're covering quite a lot of bases there with um, that. So the, sh so the short story is viable so long as you take a greater scope in the, um, to the proposition.